Once again, the K-State basketball team proved that they are the Lego that you step on on the floor and you go back to look for it, don't find it, boom, you step on it again. That's what they are because when you go back, you're like, okay, I did it once. They're not going to hurt me again. I'll find it. It'll be fine. I'm prepared for this. Then they do something like this to the number six team in the country, and you start to go, uh, I don't know. This is starting to taste like NCAA tournament team in my mouth. Just ask Drew about that. K-State wins today, 65-58, the final score over the Iowa State Cyclones. Mason Vogt, Drew Galloway here with you from K-State Online. And this is what we've seen with K-State this year. The highs are really high. You said it afterwards. They can beat any team in the country almost, and that is the truth because we've seen them beat KU and Baylor and Iowa State this season. There are probably like three teams that I don't think they can beat. That would be Houston, Purdue, and UConn. But outside of that, like anything is on the table, especially in Bramlage. And today they did it going wire to wire in the second half. Even when they got up 17, it got all the way down to, I think, five. But they battled. They found a way to persevere. And they bought themselves time to make the NCAA tournament. And that's what Jerome Tang talked about after the game, where there's still that belief. He got the guys' morale up by painting that picture for them still. And now they give themselves a chance when they go to Kansas City, where the only type of game that they'll play from here on out are quad one games. Yeah, I think the the number one takeaway today was K-State was a lot more locked in defensively. You could tell that they accepted Jerome Tang's challenge of not playing very hard, not really looking like they deserve to be really on the court as KU on Tuesday night. And, and it starts with David Gasson, I think. I, I think he's the, the first story of the game of he played probably the best game of his career in front of his parents who came from the Netherlands to be here for his senior night activities, got the crowd to chant one more year for him. And he had a career-high 16 rebounds, most uh, rebounds in a game for K-State since Mark Smith. So he, Against Ole Miss, which was... Yes, a disgusting game. A very bad game. Yeah. But uh, David Gasson was very, very good tonight. And when, when Gasson can do that, it, you really want him to come back next year because the sky is the limit on how much he's improved this year. Well, and what's interesting about Gasson, obviously the rebounds pop out at you. But to me, it's n- more important than the rebounds, which were paramount in K-State winning this game. It's the way he played offensively. He got looks inside. He finished. He was aggressive at times when the opportunity was there, and he was realistic about when he did it. Not, you know, Sometimes we see K-State, when they do decide to drive and when they don't, it kind of makes you think, am I the idiot on how the game's played? But he was smart about that today. He finished. He was big offensively. And then on top of that, we've talked about it a lot this season, but it comes down to – K-State's top three guys, they have to be that kind of player. And today, Cam Carter and Arthur Kaluma were, and that's something that had been absent from really the last handful of games because Tyler Perry was doing a lot of it on his own. And today, those guys stepped up and carried K-State to a big, big win. Yeah, and it's big for both Arthur Kaluma and Cam Carter to have a game like this going into Kansas City and playing in the Big 12 tournament because they had been so poor recently and you hope that the light is on for them but now are you worried about Tyler Perry because this is back-to-back games where he has been pretty bad and I believe he is now one of his last 14 from three shoot or shoot he'll figure it out (laughs) so you that that's the only thing that I think I would worry about for this game uh for K-State is that Tyler Perry wasn't as good today I I thought that Gerald Colbert had some flashes Mm -hmm. again his defense was good today it it certainly made Iowa State uncomfortable at times his passing has been something that has kind of unlocked the offense a little bit for K-State where he's caught the ball in the high post and has found a shooter Uh, I I made the joke during the game that it's funny the shots that went in for K-State on on the possessions and the shots that K-State missed on the possessions because it felt like it's a good point when the when K-State was kind of discombobulated. They kept scoring, but if somebody was wide open, they kept missing. Yeah, no, the the offense, there was a lot of just making something happen, and that's something that had missed from this team a lot this year where we look at it and they find themselves in a lot of close games, but at the end you're thinking, okay, you got to have that guy that can go out and do something. They didn't. They were absent of that. The offense had to be perfect. Today they had guys that went out and made plays. That's beneficial to them, and now we'll see what it does when they go to Kansas City because – like I said, quad one games and the teams that you're going to play there, BYU is a possibility. K-State has a win against them. Played close with them both times. TCU, the one time they played, yes, K-State lost in this building, but it was on a last-second three by a 25% three-point shooter. And then the other possibility is Texas, who K-State made play a really gross game with them, and the Cats had somewhat of a chance weaseling their way back into that thing. 
Texas is the one that I would like to see the least, though, because yes. that is that's, that's that's the most talented of the three. Yeah, teams. and it's just dangerous when they have two players like Ace Miss and Desu that could just light you up at any point. Uh, BYU, it, we'll see, and all that. There, there's more time to talk about that come tomorrow when we actually know who the opponent's going to be. Still a lot to be sorted out in the Big 12, but. The defense, you talked about that and how they kind of responded to Jerome Tank's challenge. One of the most important things about today was the last couple of games, the reason why K-State got off to such poor starts and really was behind the eight ball, they were turning the ball over at the same rate they normally do, and they were not forcing any turnovers from their opponent. I think Cincinnati finished the game with six last weekend, and you think if they just have one or two more, like K-State wins this thing, today Iowa State turned the ball over 14 times. So it was it was important for K-State to get their opponent back in the same neighborhood as their turnover number. Yeah, that's something that we've kind of talked about all season long. Of K-State's Achilles heel this year has been turnovers, but last year they could survive it because they turned teams mm-hmm. over at a pretty high clip. And the last few games, it just hadn't been clicking. Uh, I will say, God, if this is an, if you're an Iowa State fan after this, the, this is a rough loss. You had a chance to. I know that Houston's blowing KU out of the building yeah. right now, but you had, at least had a chance to win and put some pressure on Houston. And instead, you just dropped the ball. So at the at the end of the day, Iowa State will always be Iowa State. Yeah, I was gonna say this is par for the course for the clones. This is what they do. So I'm sure their fan base is being rational about it, and they're t- they're totally used to this happening. No doubt that they're upset, and uh, certainly not gonna be in the comments of this video just. <laughs> oh, the guy, the guy in the lavender's fat. Oh, the guy on his left. Oh, he's, he's being mean to Iowa State. Blah, 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 blah. That's going to be happening. That's all right. Uh, that's you know that's how people react, and we know how the clones will handle it very smartly. Okay, moving on from all this, Kaluma Carter, very good today. David Gasson, huge. You mentioned Tyler Perry though, and the concern about that moving forward. Looking ahead to Kansas City, because that's what's important for this team now, because. While it's still a long shot, they've given themselves a true opportunity and possibilities to get something done. If they get past the first round where we talked about they played all three of those possibilities close, they would meet Iowa State again, who, if you look at the top four seeds outside of Baylor, who, uh, I don't know, Scott Drew just likes tossing games to Jerome Tang. I guess that's the kind of relationship they have. They're that close. Iowa State, K-State played them tough in Hilton, obviously got the win here. Uh, what what are the chances? Like, if you had to give a percentage chance that K State is playing Friday night and made a strong case to be one of the last teams in the NCAA tournament field, what is that percentage chance? I, I would say that it's still probably around the twenty percent area, just because K State is probably the less talented team against when they face Iowa State, and, and Iowa State is number six in the country for a reason. They they are a very very good yeah. team. But you don't have to squint super hard to think that it's a possibility because, like, like you pointed out, K-State has beaten BYU once. They lost in the last seconds against TCU. They had a chance against Texas, and they beat Iowa State today. So you don't have to squint very hard to think that there's at least a scenario. I mean, if you want a comp for this K-State team, it's very much along the lines of that 2017 K-State team where, I mean, it kind of has it all maddening close home losses that came with it. Now, the one thing 2017 had that this team doesn't is that team did win some, you know, okay games on the road. They got late wins at TCU and Baylor that season, uh, but they had painful losses to Oklahoma State and TCU in Bramlage. They had a nasty loss to Oklahoma, but they showed up that first day of the Big 12 tournament, beat a good Baylor team, and then they played a really good West Virginia team to the wire, almost did make it uh, past past Friday. So the possibility and opportunities are there. This feels like there's some similarities, and we'll see what K-State does when they get to Kansas City next week. And Jerome Tang talked about it. He said, we weren't there very long last week, so that's certainly a motivating factor for this team. It, I, I, not to be the, the Debbie Downer here, oh, but th- th- this is this – game is the reason that the Cincinnati loss hurts so much. Is and that, the Oklahoma State yes. game. And the Texas Tech game, yeah. Because this team can beat anybody. Which it feels like we've said that after pretty much every win yes. since the KU game. It, it, it has made those other ones hurt because this team is talented enough to be in the NCAA tournament, but they have the maddening losses or the close losses. I mean, e- even TCU right now, if mm-hmm. they would have that, yep. I, you could argue that K-State should probably be in the field right now. Yep, that's a good point. We'll see how it plays out for K-State. One final thing, and this was uh, something that Jerome Tang answered talking about, like T.J. Otzelberger, and it, it clicked with me. And I think, I don't know if it was intentional or if it was just kind of some insight, but it's how I've kind of felt. 
He said the reason why T.J. Otzelberger has been so successful his first three seasons at Iowa State is because he's been good at acquiring the right players, and he's got the fit. They fit together as a team, and then he also is able to ingrain in them his style. That, to me, is the perfect illustration of why this K-State team is in the position they are this year and why, ultimately, they haven't been very good. Because last year's team, Jerome Tang, got talented players. They fit together as a team. They all have their role. The pieces of the puzzle went together. It ended up in Elite Eight, and Jerome Tang put his touch on it with they played solid defense at times and forcing turnovers. This year's team, the pieces don't fit. Like, we've talked about that plenty of times. And they, they're working really hard. Like, they are that four-year-old that has the puzzle in front of them, and you can tell them every time you want that, no, that piece does not go to this one. They're going to try and jam it in there, and the, the edges of it are kind of folded in, and they're going to make it work. That's what Jerome Tang has tried to do this year, and I think that just illustrates what Jerome Tang is going to continue to do and what the opportunity is moving forward. And one of the things that's going to make that easier on Jerome Tang is – he's going to be here long enough to start getting the high school recruits in to build off of to where you'll kind of have a better base and now you're just more so filling out a roster instead of building a brand new one every year. And that's what we're starting to see with Iowa State where T.J. Otzelberger year one did a really good job of making it work, taking a terrible Steve Prohm team, yes. getting pieces, going deep in the NCAA tournament. Now he's starting to lay the foundation where they've got some young guys coming in. Milan Momchilovic has been good for him this season at times. They've got another. They've got more good recruits coming in. He is starting to get his base. That's what Jerome Tang is trying to do. And you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And until you get that firm base, I think you're you're going to have some ups and downs. But I think that illustrated kind of where K State's issues have been this season. Yeah, I mean that, that's a good point. And you can argue that in the games that K State's won. It have been the games where the role players have really stepped up and mm-hmm. embraced their role, and then games that they've lost, the the roles haven't been as defined because one major piece has been bad, or you just didn't get enough from your other role players. So I mean, it, that that is a good point. Yeah, and again, credit to Jerome Tang because I think the pieces would have fit fit together a little bit better had you had Naquan Tomlin and Quez Glover, but obviously they haven't played a single game this year. So you got to make do with what you have in front of you. I think he's truly done the best that he can. It's been frustrating to get to that point, and uh, we'll see if things can turn around and, and make this season a little cheerier come Wednesday in Kansas City. K-State not playing on loser day anymore. Not playing on loser day. Boy, 10th place <laughs> has never felt so good, uh, which is a loser thing to say, but you're not playing on loser day, so you're not a real loser like the bottom four teams in the league. We'll see what it brings. K-State's locked into playing at 6 o'clock on Tuesday or Wednesday. It's going to be a hot ticket because KU is also going to be in that session barring some unforeseen comeback on the road at Houston. So It's going to be busy there. And then if K-State were to win, the very next day you've got K-State, KU, and Iowa State that would all be in the same session as well. So uh, get your tickets now if you're a Cap fan. Or just say, you know what, I don't want to step on that Lego again. I'm going to just uh, do it from the comfort of my own couch, which you're lost because even bad K-State teams, I love the Big 12 tournament. Best best time you can have uh, in basketball. And we get to be there all day on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. I uh, get get everything fired up for whatever that 11.30 game is going to be. BYU might be playing in it, so that would be kind of cool if they get hot or I'll just be like, man, these guys – they're really frustrating to watch. So No, we get to eat all the food, so I think that's oh, yeah. good enough for me. Yep, uh, which if anybody's concerned about that, Derek Young has already deposited extra money into <laughs> my account this week. He's paying for all of it, his words, not mine. So uh, all the reviews coming to you from Kansas City. We will be there on Wednesday. We'll have more for you either tomorrow or Monday over on K-State Online as we get ready to recap this game, also preview the Big 12 tournament, talk about all the Big 12 awards that will come out uh, between that time and then, and the the K-State women already up in Kansas City getting uh, the T-Mobile Center warm for the Cats. Uh, they are playing this evening against West Virginia to try and advance to the semifinals. Uh, and then they would play they would play the championship game on Tuesday, on night. Tuesday night. So you might get an early start there if the Cats get going there. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. The Cats win it here tonight, get a big win over number six, Iowa State. We will be back next week. Thanks for watching K-State Online.